Hi, my name is Paul Solt, and this is iPhone Dev TV. Now we're going to learn about variables and types. So when you want to store information in the computer, you have to tell the computer in a certain way what kind of information you're storing. And we use variables and types as sort of a way to convey that information to the computer. So let's talk about variables first. When we want to give information to the computer, we want it to remember something. And so we create a variable that both the computer can remember and that we can remember. And we give it a name and we give it a value. So we might ask the, the computer to remember a date. We might ask the computer to store a movie and so on. And so these are, are different ways that we sort of interact with the computers and our iPhones and things like that. And when we want to build an app, we're going to have to store a lot of information and sort of process user input and, and display different kinds of media like images and text and, and maybe have audio effects or something like that. So variables are really uh, an essential part of any application because it's how we can remember things in our application and make the app feel like it's smart, feel that it's actually doing something useful. Let's look at a simple line of code. Here we have int age is equal to 27. Now this line of code is going to create a variable and it's going to store a value in it. And let's step through what each of these different parts mean. So the first part is the type. And again, the type is to inform the computer what kind of information we're storing and sort of how big it's going to be. A, a movie is going to be a two gigabyte file whereas a Word doc might be a 200 kilobyte file. And so you have different amounts of space that your computer is going to need to sort of store that type of information. We have that same idea when we're talking about types for just an individual variable. Next, we have the name or the alias. This is what we're going to call our variable. So we want to identify this. And we generally want our variable names to be human readable. So we want them to be informative to us. So when I read your code, and I see that you've created a variable, the name needs to make sense. It needs to convey what kind of information you're storing and sort of give me an idea of what you're doing. The next part is the expression. And in this case, it's just 27, but we could also have something like 27 plus one. And that expression is something that can be evaluated and then the result can be returned. So if it was 27 plus one, that would be evaluated to 28. And what happens is the expression is going to be stored in our named variable age. And we use the assignment operator. So that's what the equal sign is. When you see an equal sign, it's the assignment operator. That's what you want to call it. And this is a, an arrow basically that points from the right side to the left side. And so anything on the right side will be stored in the left side which is our variable. And so this is how we can communicate information to the computer. I like to use sticky notes to sort of visualize what the computer is doing. When we write this line of code, I want you to think that there's a sticky note that the computer has in its RAM or its hard drive, and it's going to store the value 27 on it, and it's going to give it a name age. And so this is how the computer can reference that age when you need to modify it or when you want to display it or do something about it. So let's do a more complex example. We'll create multiple variables, we'll set some initial values, and then we'll do some addition and subtraction. These six lines of code are a good place to start and to sort of see how everything works together. So the first line, we can create a new variable or new sticky note and call that A. And every one of these lines is going to end with a semicolon. The semicolon is our period in the end of the sentence for a line of code. So if you don't have a semicolon, you've got an improper sentence, essentially. When we step to the next line, it's going to create another sticky note named B. And then we go to the next line, and it's going to store the value of 5 into our sticky note, A. Go to the next line, it stores 20 on B. And now we get to a little bit more complicated line. This is five plus B. So what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the result of the expression five plus B. And B is going to be replaced with the current value 
of whatever b is in that expression. So we have 5 plus 20. So we can use our own value to modify the value that we're going to essentially store. And so 5 plus 20 is going to be 25, and we store that in b, and then we're done. And so that's how uh, computer code works and sort of how variables can sort of modify their own values using themselves. The next line we have is a minus b. We'll just substitute in the values that are currently available. So we have 5 minus 25, and that results in negative 20. So this is exactly how your computer will sort of evaluate these lines of code. When you write something, it's evaluated sequentially. It starts with the first line and goes all the way to the end. All right, the next thing that we're going to talk about are types in a little bit more detail. So this is what kind of information we're storing. Like you can store photos and videos and Word documents and things like that. Types allow us to sort of describe the building blocks that sort of go into those, those more complicated and, and bigger pieces of information that we store in the computer. So these are the most common ones that we're going to see. You have short, int, and long. And these are all special keywords that identify integer types. And that can be a negative number, it can be zero, or it can be a positive number. And these are whole numbers, so there's no decimal places. Next, we have float and double, and this is for real numbers, and these can have decimal places. So 3.14 is a good example of something like this. After that, we have care, and this is short for character. We have a single letter in quotation marks. Then there are pointers, and you'll see something like int star, and this is used to store addresses. So much like we have homes and businesses that each have a unique address, the computer memory has unique addresses where it can store information. So that's where your information can live. And pointers are used to share addresses between different applications and different pieces of code. We'll get more into that later on. And lastly, we have struct, and this is for grouping information together. So if I want to store a, a coordinate for a treasure or the current position of a player in a game, I'm going to want to group information together because the X and the Y coordinate on the map is going to be sort of an important piece of information that needs to be grouped together. So let's step through some simple examples to sort of show you what the differences are between each of these categories. So short, int, and long have different amounts of information that they can store. Short would be the smallest, int is sort of medium, and it's in the middle, and long is the biggest. And so they can store different size numbers. So depending on your application, you might store really small numbers or really big numbers, and that's what these are for. Generally, you'll use an int, and you don't really need to worry about the other two. Next, we have float and double. And so float is, is smaller, but it's there's sort of a, an important caveat here. It's not just smaller, it's less precise. And so we can only store less decimal places accurately. And we start to get round off errors. So this isn't a type that you would use when you wanted to calculate the, the rocket trajectory to get to the moon, because you'd have loss of precision, which would result in your rocket missing the moon. So you use something like a double that can store more decimal places. And this is just because there's more bits where it can store its information on the computer so it can represent a larger number. Then we have some examples of some pointers, and we have a float and an int pointer. And again, these are storing addresses to information. And we'll talk more about this in a future video. And lastly, we have the struct, and this is short for structure. So this is how we can group information together. On the top, I'm showing you how it's sort of declared to create a point object that would store both an X and a Y coordinate. And then on the bottom is how you would create it. And then store the value. So here we use the period, which we call the dot operator, to access those sort of inner variables. So we have the, the A, which is our point, and then within inside of that, it has the attributes X and Y that represent 25 and 100. 
So this is just a small set of some of the most common types that we'll see. You'll see int, float, double, and uh, in pointers in a lot of iPhone apps. Okay, so now we're gonna jump over to Xcode and I'm gonna show you how to use some of this stuff. 